Friends, question number 49. Under section 17 of the Sale of Goods Act 1930, there is an implied condition that the bulk of the goods shall correspond with the a sample. It's a point. Section 17 deals with what? The implied condition as to the sample and description. There what we say, the bulk of the goods shall correspond with the sample. A is the right answer for question number 49. Question number 50. X bought milk which contained typhoid germs. His wife consumed the milk and died. He could recover the damages. These facts are given in which case? Faust versus Aylesbury Dairy Company. C is the right answer. Question number 51. In a contract of sale of goods, the implied condition as to the wholesome of, of the goods applies where? Not to the clothes, only for the eatables. Soft drinks and milk, cakes and pastries both in cases of B and C. So the implied condition as to the wholesomeness of the goods applies in case of eatable things, soft drinks and milk, cakes and pastries. D is the right answer. Question number 52. In a commercial contract stipulation as to the time other than the time of payment depends upon the terms of the contract. In commercial contracts, stipulation as to the time other than the time of the payment is going to be dependent upon the uh, terms of the contract. See, time is the essence of the contract. That is, other than the time for the payment, all other th times relating to the delivery of the goods and all depends upon the terms of the contract. A is the right answer. Question number 53. Which of the following condition is implied in a contract of sale of goods? Condition as to the sale by description. Condition as to the sale by sample condition as to the title these are all the implied conditions in a contract of sale d is the right answer those two. question number 54 in case of sale of goods by sample as well as by description the goods should correspond with both sample as well as description a d is the right answer both a and b Question number 55. In case of sale of goods by sample as well as by description, the goods should correspond with both sample as well as the description. A and B is the right answers. D is the right answer. Question number 56. In case of sale by description, there is an implied condition that the goods shall correspond with the description. There is an implied dash, implied condition as to the goods shall correspond to the description. A is the right answer. Question number 57. Implied warranty of freedom from a dash encumbrances means buyer is entitled to a warranty that the goods they purchase just are not subjected to any charge in favor of any third party not declared or known to the buyer before or at the time when the contract is made. So what is this? It is an implied warranty of freedom from encumbrances. This already I explained in detail. Question number 57 is right answer. Question number 58. In a contract of sale of goods, the implied condition as to the wholesomeness applies to what? Already we discussed this. To the eatables. B is the right answer. Question number 59. In a contract of sale of goods, implied condition as to the merchantability of the goods applies where goods are sold by description. B is the right answer. Question number 60. Which of the following statements are correct? Breach of warranty can be treated as a breach of condition. Condition as to the wholesomeness of the goods applies to the eatables. In a contract of sale of goods, there is always an implied condition as to the quality or fitness of the goods for any particular purpose. In an agreement to sell the goods, there is an implied condition. The seller will have a right to sell the goods at the time when the property in the goods is to pass as a point. See, all these statements, whether they are correct, what we say, that is, uh, 2 and 4 are correct. That is, condition as to the wholesomeness of the goods applies to the eatables is uh, a correct statement. 4 is what? In an agreement to sell the goods, there is an implied condition that the seller will have a right to sell. That is, uh, implied condition as to the title. 2 and 4 are correct, whereas 1 and 3 are not correct. That is, breach of warranty can be treated as a breach of condition is not the point. And in a contract of sale of goods, there is always an implied condition as to the quality and fitness of the goods for any particular purpose is not uh, correct. Only when purpose is specifically stated, then only 
there is an implied condition as to the quality or the fitness. There is no implied condition as to the quality and fitness for any particular purpose is not the point. I can't make sale of the goods by saying that a aap lelo or this is useful for any of your purpose bol ke kaise bol sakte hai There is no such implied condition or as to the quality or fitness with respect to the goods for any particular purpose. So 1 and 3 are not correct whereas 2 and 4 are correct. Question number 60, the right answer is B. Question number 61. Dash implies that the goods should be of such quality and in such condition that they are commercially saleable under the description by which they are known in the market. It is called as a merchantable quality. Merchantable quality implies that the goods should be of such quality and in such condition that they are commercially saleable under the description by which they are known in the market. A is the right answer. Question number 62. Merchantable quality of the goods means what? All the three things should be there that the goods are free from any latent defects hidden defects latent means not uh, apparent latent means hidden defects the goods are free from hidden defects that goods are marketable at their full value the goods can be used for the purpose for which they are bought by the prudent person all these things are uh, the one which describes what do you mean by merchantable quality of the goods could mean d is the right answer Question number 63. In a commercial contract, stipulation as to the time of payment is usually not an essence of the contract. Stipulation as to the, what is it, uh, time of delivery of the goods is essence of the contract, but it is uh, that the stipulation as to the time of payment is not usually uh, the essence of the contract. B is the right answer. Question number 64. In case of sale of goods by description under section 15 of the Sale of Goods Act, the implied condition is that the goods shall correspond with the description. Section 15 says with there is an implied condition is that the goods shall correspond with the description. B is the right answer. Question number 65. If the goods are not in accordance with the description of the goods as given in the contract, buyer is entitled to reject the goods irrespective of whether the property in the goods has passed to the buyer or not. Is it a true statement? Yes, those two. In case if the goods do not correspond with the, the or in accordance with the description of the goods as given in the contract, then buyer is entitled to reject the goods. It is a true statement even if the property is getting passed on to the buyer. A is the right answer. Question number 66. According to section 12 of Sale of Goods Act 1930, the warranty is a stipulation collateral to the main purpose of the contract. So we are coming to the revision questions. B is the right answer. Earlier also we discussed so many questions on this particular point that warranty is a stipulation collateral to the main purpose of the contract. B is the right answer. Question number 67. In a contract of sale of goods, a stipulation, the violation of which gives a party a right to resign the contract, that right to resign the contract comes only in a situation where there is a violation as to the condition. C is the right answer. Question number 68. If the goods are not in accordance with the description of the goods as given in the contract, buyer is not entitled to reject the goods, he is a false statement. B is the right answer. Question number 69. X agreed to sell oil described as a double refined oil warranted only equal to sample. The goods are delivered were equal to the sample but contained a mixture of till oil. What are the buyer's rights? Once the one which is supplied is not according to the sample, then the buyer has all has got right to reject the goods. A is the right answer. Question number 70. Condition or warranty in a contract of sale constitute a stipulation with reference to the goods only, not with reference to the price, time or delivery. Conditions or warranty in a contract of sale constitute a stipulation with reference to the goods only. C is the right answer. Question number 71. A stipulation in a contract of sale with reference to the sale, with reference to the goods which are subject matter thereof may be that is stipulation can be with respect to the condition or with respect to the warranty both A and B not a condition precedent. A stipulation in a contract of sale with reference to the goods which are subject matter thereof may be a condition or a warranty. D is the right answer. Question number 72. The sale of goods act provides for what? 
sale of goods act provides for an implied condition as to the title of the goods an implied warranty that the buyer shall have to enjoy a quiet possession quiet possession is a warranty and a title to the goods is a condition and then an implied warranty as to the freedom from any charge or encumbrance on the goods all of the above are there given in the sale of goods act d is the right answer question number 73 when goods are sold on buyer return basis the property in the goods will pass on to the seller from the seller to the buyer on signifying the acceptance on expiry of the specified period on doing some act adopting the transaction in all these three situations the property that is uh, the right in that particular goods is going to be passed on from the seller to the buyer is a point d is the right answer question number 74 in a contract of sale of goods breach of condition may be treated as a breach of a warranty c is the right answer but if uh, the buyer is going to treat the breach of contract as breach of warranty then he loses his right to resign the contract he can only claim for damages c is the right answer question number 75 the doctrine of caveat emptor implies that ordinarily the buyer must be aware c is the right answer question number 76 in a contract of sale there is no implied condition as to the quality or fitness of the goods for any particular purpose such kind of warranty is not there or such kind of implied condition is not there so there is no such a situation that i make sale of the goods which you can use for any of your purpose aisa bolke there is no implied condition c is the right answer question number 77 in case of a condition is changed to the status of warranty then the buyer loses the right to reject the goods he retains the right to claim for the damages that is what earlier also i explained this particular point dosto what is that particular point once the buyer excuses the breach of condition then it becomes uh, gets into a status of the warranty and uh, he loses his right to reject the goods and he retains a right to claim the uh, damages only is a point so c is the right answer question number 78 if the seller does not possess any right to sell and still sells the goods to a buyer the transaction will be illegal if the buyer has to return the goods to the rightful owner the seller who did not have a right to sell has to pay the price let us suppose i am purchasing from x the goods which are actually owned by y then i am bound to give back that particular goods to y and i can take back whatever that i paid to x is a point so b is the right answer question number 79 the doctrine of caveat emptor means let the buyer be aware b is the right answer question number 80 a buyer may treat the breach of condition as a breach of warranty by using an option to treat the breach of condition as a a breach of warranty so in case if the buyer is a dil wale then he can always excuse for the breach of condition he can treat it as a breach of warranty and can simply think about uh, what is it uh, treating it as a breach of warranty and only can claim the uh, damages is a point but once he treats the breach of condition as a breach of warranty then dosto he will lose his right of uh, rejecting the goods question number 80b is a right answer question number 81 in case a buyer uses his option to treat the breach of condition as a breach of warranty then he loses his right to repudiate the contract he still he, he loses a right to reject the goods he loses his right to claim the damages only a and b he loses his right to repudiate the contract he loses his right to reject the goods he will still have the right to claim the damages that's the reason why d is the right answer dosto Question number eighty-two. In a contract of sale of goods, a stipulation the violation of which gives the party a right to claim the damages is called as what warranty. If there is a breach of warranty, then the buyer has got uh, every right to claim the damages. Is a point. C is the right answer. Question number eighty-three. Section twelve of Sale of Goods Act, nineteen thirty, defines both a condition as well as a warranty. C is the right answer, friends. 
question number 84 breach of condition gives right to repudiate the contract and claim the damages is a point c is the right answer question number 85 any stipulation other than the time of the payment is of the essence of the contract depends upon the terms of the contract earlier also we discussed this particular question friends c is the right answer question number 86 an implied condition an implied warranty or condition as to the quality or fitness for a particular purpose cannot be annexed by usage or trade no it can be very well be annexed by usage of a, a trade is a point c is the right answer question number 87 Implied condition that the goods are of purchasable quality is lost where the buyer has actually examined the goods. This is applicable in respect of the defects which arises subsequent to the delivery of the goods which are pointed out by the third party latent patent. Latent ka matlab kya hua? Patent ka matlab kya hua? Ab, ab, learn kar sakte. Kya hai? Latent means those which cannot be identified on mere examination of the goods. You call it as a latent. What do you mean by patent? Those which such examination ought to have revealed. Patent bole to, those which such examination ought to have revealed. By examination, the defects can be identified. Bole to, patent batate hum. Aur latent batate to, uska matlab kya hai? Those which cannot be identified on mere examination. But here the question here is implied condition that goods are of merchantable quality is lost where the buyer has actually examined the goods. This is applicable in respect of the defects which are which arises subsequent to the delivery of the goods. Subsequent to the delivery of the goods if there are some defects then the implied condition that the goods are of merchantable quality is lost. Then B is the right answer. So defects that come subsequent uh, to the delivery of the goods in respect of that there is no implied condition that the goods are of merchantable quality 87b is the right answer question number 88 section 17 of the sale of goods act provides for implied condition in a contract of sale of goods by sample b is the right answer question number 89 an express warranty or condition does not negative a warranty or condition implied by this act unless inconsistent therewith this statement is true an express warranty or a condition does not negative a warranty or condition implied see when we purchase some goods there will be a warranty that will be given by the seller but this is not going to negative it you are implied warranties is a point friends so it is a true statement only a is the right answer. Question number 90. In a sale of goods by description, it is sufficient that goods are the same as that of their uh, a description is a point. D is the right answer. Question number 91. An implied warranty or a condition as to the quality or fitness for a particular purpose may be annexed by the usage or trade. Yes, this is a true statement. That is, implied warranty or condition as to the quality or fitness for a particular purpose may be annexed by the usage. This is a true statement which can be annexed by the usage of the trades. True statement. Question number 92. A contract of sale is a contract for sale by sample. If it is by way of express or implied term in the contract to that effect. A contract of sale is a contract for sale by sample. If it is by way of express or implied term in the contract. So, a contract of sale can be very well be treated as contract of sale by sample that is generally we select the samples and ask the seller to supply the goods of that particular sample is the point description then contract of sale is a contract of sale by sample also c is the right answer question number 93 where the goods be sold are dangerous and the seller knows that buyer is ignorant about the dangerous nature of the goods kya hai? question kya hai goods are sold they are dangerous and the seller knows that buyer is ignorant about the dangerous nature then it is the duty of the buyer duty of the buyer to ask the seller about the probable a danger is a point see it is not the duty of the seller to warn the buyer about the probable danger. It is the duty of the seller to warn the buyer about the probable danger. It is the duty of the seller to sell the goods. It is the duty of the buyer to ask the seller about the probable danger. See, I am going to a medical shop. 
I don't know about a particular medicine, but the seller is bound to know what are the dangers of using that particular medicine without prescription. Then it is the bounded duty of the seller to tell me that there is a dangerous aspect involved in this particular medicine. B is the right answer. It's not the D. B is the right answer. It is a duty of the seller to warn the buyer about the probable danger as a point. B is the right answer for question number 93. Question number 94. A agrees to deliver to B 1000 bags of desi wheat at a rate of rupees 1500 per quintal. The wheat delivered by A is not desi wheat. What are the rights to the B? B can very well reject the goods by description. See, when I am asking for goods with a particular description, if you don't supply the goods of that particular description, then very well I can reject the goods by because they do not meet with the description which I prescribed. B is the right answer, dosto. Question number 95. When does property in the goods pass from seller to the buyer in a contract of sale of goods in goods sent on approval? Once goods are sent on a sale or up sale on approval, when the property gets transferred, dosto, the approval is communicated to the buyer buyer makes a return to the seller not the approval is communicated to the seller the buyer makes the return of the goods impossible on expiry of the reasonable buyer makes return of the goods on expiry of the reasonable term all of the above what is the question when does the property the goods pass from seller to the buyer in a contract of sale of goods in a good sent to the approval once the approval is communicated or when the reasonable time got elapsed or once he do something which amounts to its consumption. So, D is the right answer, dosto. So, buyer makes the return of the goods impossible means when buyer makes the return of the goods impossible, jab buyer kha lete na, use kar lete na, tab return ho jata, nahi ho jata na. See, you gave the goods to me, I purchased the goods from you and of course, you send the goods on approval basis. I started using them. Then the question of returning them becomes impossible. That means the property in those goods transferred from seller to the a buyer is a point. D, all of the above is the right answer. Question number 96. In case of eatables or foodstuffs and provisions, in addition to the implied condition that the goods shall be what? Wholesomeness. So, if it is an eatable item, the implied condition is that what they are with wholesomeness, good in condition. Ko kya batate hum? Wholesomeness batate B is right answer dosto. Question number 97. Transfer of ownership in higher purchase is only after payment of all agreed installments. 51% payment, ownership changes in proportion to the payment, none of the above. No. Only when last installment is made, paid by the buy, purchaser to the seller, then only the ownership in that particular goods gets a transferred is a point to be noted, friends. So, C is the right answer. Question number 98. In which of the condition the buyer is not deemed to have accepted the goods? Their goods are delivered to the buyer and he refuses to accept them, having a right to so, right so to do. He is, does not return them to the seller but intimates to the seller that he refuses to accept them. Then in a, such situation buyer is not deemed to have accepted them. B is the right answer. That is where the goods are delivered to the buyer and he refused to accept it having a right to do so and he, is, he does not return them to the seller but intimates to the seller that he refuses to accept. So return kardo naito at least not accepted bolke communicate kardo tab it is deemed that the goods uh, have not been accepted by the buyer is a point. B is the right answer. Question number 99. Dash is a stipulation essential to condition is a stipulation essential for the main purpose of the contract the breach of which gives rise a right to treat the contract as a repudiated. Of course, n number of times we define the condition. What is the condition? Condition is a stipulation essential to the main purpose of the contract. 
A is the right answer. Question number 100. In a contract of sale, there is an implied warranty that buyer shall have and shall enjoy quiet possession of the goods. This means that the right of possession of the buyer should not be disturbed either by the seller or by any person. So B is the right answer. This also we have discussed. B is the right answer. Question number 101. X agrees to supply to Y a certain quantity of timber of half inch thickness. The timber actually supplied varies in thickness from one third inch to the five eighth inch. The timber is a merchantable and commercially fit for the purpose for which it was ordered. B rejects the timber. Is his right justified? Yes. Y is entitled to reject the goods once the goods supplied is not up to what he has described. A is the right answer. Question number 102. If the sale is by sample as well as by description, it means it is sufficient that the bulk of the goods correspond with the sample. If goods do not also correspond with the description, no. It is uh, not sufficient that the bulk of the goods correspond with the sample if the goods do correspond with the description. No, it is not sufficient that the bulk of the goods correspond with the sample if the goods do not also correspond with the description. Please do remember friends that is if the sale is by sample as well as by description it means that it is sufficient that bulk of the goods correspond with the sample if goods do not also correspond with the description uh, still we permit it so a is the right answer so what do you mean by what is it uh, the sale is by sample as well as by description it means it is sufficient that the bulk of the goods correspond with the sample if the goods do not also correspond with the uh, description a is the right answer. Then, dosto, question number 103. X purchased a branded hot water bag from chemist. The bag leaked and injured his wife. Is the chemist liable? That is, um, X purchased a branded hot water bag from the chemist. The bag leaked and injured the wife. Is the chemist liable? No. Since specific goods are sold under the patent or trade name. Yes, this is very, very important thing, dosto. That is, if it is a patented or trade name item for any, what is it, uh, leakage or damage, the trader who supplied that particular goods is uh, not to be uh, blamed is a point. So, no, since specific goods are sold under a patent or the trade name, this is a very, very important question from the examination point of view. This is quite contrast to what I explained earlier. But that earlier what I explained and this differs in what sense? Here, what the goods which got sold is uh, the one which is uh, sold under the patent or the uh, trade name is a point C is a right answer. Question number 104 implied condition as to the quality or fitness does not apply if the buyer reserves the right to examine the goods and check its quality if the, the then cavity emptor comes into play please remember in case if the buyer says i will examine and then check its quality then there is no implied condition as to the quality or the fitness then friends d is the right answer question number 105 the implied condition as to the quality or fitness is not applicable where the buyer contracts for a specific article under its patent or other tra trade name not relying on the skill and judgment of the seller. See, if you are purchasing a patented or a trade name product, then the implied condition as to the quality and fitness is not uh, applicable as a point. If it is not a patented or trade name related product, then only the implied condition is there as to the quality or the fitness is a point. C is the right answer. Question number 106. Where the goods to be sold are dangerous and the seller knows that the buyer is ignorant about the dangerous nature of the goods and if any injury is caused to the buyer because of the dangerous quality of the goods, the seller will be liable for the damages to the buyer for the injury. A is the right answer. This is what we have earlier also studied in hot bottle case. So, A is the right answer. Then friends, question number 107. X sells his cat to Y saying that it is very lucky. B buys the cat but the cat does not prove to be lucky. Has Y caused, Y 
has y any cause of action against x no as it is a mere expression of opinion see opinion should be differ from what uh, is it the stipulations or uh, representations representations differs from the opinions if the buyer is making a represent if the seller is making a representation and if it is proved that it is a misrepresentation and all then only the seller is uh, bound to what is it uh, give pay the damages and all where the seller merely express an opinion on the basis of that opinion if you are purchasing something and later it is proved that the opinion is wrong please do remember then the seller do not have any obligation so B is the right answer. Question number 108 X of Calcutta contracts to buy from Y of Mumbai 1000 bags of cement Y sends 1000 bags through track when cement arrives in Calcutta it becomes a stone by the by the contact of rain water can I reject the goods yes condition as to the merchantability is the reason why you can reject see cement bags aap kharidne ke liye tayar hai to uno bijaya tumko meantime rainfall happened and it became what is it uh, it becomes a stone then do you have the right to reject the goods very much you can reject the goods question number 108 b is the right answer question number 109 conditions which are implied by law in every contract of sale of goods unless contrary intention appears from the terms of the contract is called as implied condition conditions which are implied by the law in every contract of sale of goods unless the contrary intention appears from the terms of the contract is called as a implied condition then friends a is the right answer question number 110 the implied condition includes what condition in case of sale by description and sample condition as to the quality or fitness for a particular purpose condition as to the merchantable quality of the goods these are all the implied conditions all of the above d is the right answer then question number 111 which of the following is not required for the implied condition as to the quality or the fitness buyer reserves the right to examine the goods and checks its quality in that case what is it there is no implied condition as to the quality and the uh, fitness b is the right answer dosto then question number 112 an implied condition as to the fitness of the goods for a particular purpose applies where the buyer relies on the judgment of the manufacturer or dealer irrespective of whether the place says reliance whether he places reliance on anything else or not this statement is very much a true statement M an implied condition as to the fitness of the goods for a particular purpose applies where buyer relies on the judgment of the manufacturer is the uh, point friends it's a true statement a is the right answer question number 113 implied condition as to the merchantable quality applies to the sale of goods under patent or other trade name by description only either a or b neither a nor b implied condition as to the merchantable quality applies only applies to the sale of goods by description only not under the patent or other trade name b is the right answer dosto what is it b is the right answer question number 114 y agrees to buy from x 250 bags of sugar by sample the sugar delivered to y who pays the price why on examination of the sugar discovers that it's not equal to the sample why awards uses uh, why afterwards uses two bags and sells one he wants to return the remaining bags can he do so no once you start consuming the goods which are not according to the requirements which you specified to the seller then the buyer loses his right to what you call reject the goods so in case of sale by sample once the buyer starts consuming it he will lose the right to reject the goods this is very very important question from the examination point of view question number 115 a lady who knew that her skin was abnormally sensitive bought a tweed coat and developed a skin trouble by using it she did not disclose to the seller that her skin was abnormally sensitive is the seller liable for breach of implied condition as to the fitness and quality no seller is not liable because 
the buyer is not specifying what the problem she has got she has not asked for a specific item so in that situation the seller is not liable a is the right answer question number 116 x sold a tin of disinfected powder to y y knew about the dangerous nature of the powder and he also see x sold a tin of disinfected powder to y x knew about the dangerous nature of the powder and he also knew that tin was to be opened with a special care otherwise it might prove very dangerous he also knew that y was ignorant about it and still he did not warn y about the dangerous nature of the goods and special care is required to be taken while opening the tin y opened the tin and his eyes were injured by the powder in that particular case X was liable to pay the damages to Y as he should have warned Y about the a probable danger. A is the right answer. Question number 117. Implied condition as to the quality or fitness becomes applicable only if the buyer indicates to the seller that he relies on the seller's skill and judgment. There only implied condition as to the quality or the fitness becomes applicable is a point to be well noted. Dosto. So, question number 117 C is the right answer. Question number 118. For availing the benefit of exception given under section 16 of the Sale of Goods Act, the buyer must make known to the seller the particular purpose for which the goods are wanted from either expressly or by implication. So, the benefit of uh, under section 16 that is a condition as to the uh, quality and fitness, merchantability and fitness and all these things will be available only when goods, uh, that is uh, the buyer makes, um, buyer is going to tell to the seller about uh, the purpose for which the goods are wanted, either in express form or in the by implication. C is the right answer. Question number 119 friends, X purchased from a retailer two underpants manufactured by R and company. After wearing one of them, rashes developed on the skin. The rashes were caused by the chemical irritant which manufacturer had failed to remove in the process of manufacture. Exclude the manufacturer for damages. Will he succeed? Yes. Condition as to the merchantability is the principle on the basis of which, yes, purchaser can sue the manufacturer who has not taken sufficient care regarding the merchantability of the goods. A is the right answer. Question number 120. Implied condition and warranties in a contract of sale may be negative or varied by express agreement between the parties to the contract, the course of dealing between them, the custom or usage of the trade. So, implied conditions and warranties in a contract of sale may be negativated or varied by a express agreement between the parties the course of dealing between them, the customer, the usage, all of them, all of them is a right answer. Question number 121. X purchased a cow from Y who died on the next day. For the loss can X, for this loss can X get reimbursed from Y? Yes, he can recover at least a part of the loss. So, you purchased last day and it died today. In that case, the loss can be very well be asked to be paid is a point so it can recover a part of the loss c is the right answer question number 122 exceptions to the doctrine of cavity tempter is what see cavity tempter means buyer be aware the exceptions are that fitness for the buyer's purpose merchantable quality as per the sample if the sale is by samples in all these cases that the doctrine of a, a cavity tempter will not have the application. So, this earlier we discussed in detail. D is the right answer, friends. Question number 123. Implied warranties include what? All these things. Warranty as to the quiet position. Warranty as to the freedom from encumbrances. Warranty as to the quality or fitness for a particular purpose. Annexed by the usage or trade. All of the above. Earlier also we discussed this particular point, friends. Question number 124. Implied conditions include condition as to the title, condition in case of sale by description, condition in case of sale by sample. All of the above is the right answer. Question number 125, friends. A. Warranty is a stipulation collateral to the main purpose of the contract. 
yes a number of times we discussed this particular point what do you mean by warranty warranty is a stipulation collateral to the main purpose of the contract a is the right answer friends question number 126 match the list one items with the list two and select the correct answer the codes are given below stipulation which is collateral to the main purpose of the contract is called as warranty so a in the list one two is the right match the goods which can be sold at a full market value is a goods which can be sold at a full market value is a, of a merchantable quality buyer should be careful should not take any chances is what we have studied in the cavet enter and stipulation which is essential to the main purpose of the contract is a condition so the right matching is what c is the right matching a2 b3 c4 d1 friends once again i thank all of you for giving a patient listening and we completed the second chapter of uh, the sale of goods act that is conditions and warranty